Camden Hells Revisited. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I had a request the other day for somebody, from somebody to re-review -re Camden Hells. So here it is, a big fuck off bottle of it. And this is one that how I had reviewed, I think it was a year ago, and I just started getting into reviewing beer. And this was widely, well it still is widely available. And I, I remember I quite liked it. And there are a few things that I do like about this beer. Now, you can argue, yes, there's a craft brewer. Yes, they've been taken over by Heineken. And yes, the beer is not cheap. I had a pint of this the other day. Well, I say the other day, Christ almighty, that is that's about six months ago now. I was in a pub in Bermondsey, which is fucking bandit country for a West Ham fan. And I was in a pub there. I was meeting a mate from Slovenia, and I bought a pint of that and it cost me over six quid. I'll, actually, I don't even think it was a pint. It might have been a 440 mil glass and I weren't best happy. It didn't taste too bad, I will say that, but over six pounds, you are taking the fucking piss in my opinion. But that's probably not down to Camden Hills. That is down to the individual pub. That beer is widely available. Now, when they say Camden Hills, Camden Town was one of my old stomping grounds years ago. Back in the early 90s, I was a skinhead, and we used to go down it. Camden Town was a dump. It wasn't the tourist trap that it is now, and we used to drink in some rough pubs down there, and that was every weekend. And there was a fair few of us, to, fair few of us used to go down there. This stuff wasn't available back then. It was your average macro-brewed crap that we'd be drinking. But I do remember when I first tasted this, it was in a place called The Black Heart, which is in Camden. It's a pub that's just, well, it's not a pub. It, well, is it a pub? I'd say it's more of a club type thing. Uh, it's a venue called The Black Heart, and it's round the corner from The Underworld, which is a well-known venue in Camden Town. And you go upstairs to it. It's quite a small venue, but if you get a really good band in there, it is one of the best venues in London. Now, obviously a lot of venues have closed down in London, some brilliant venues that I used to play in and go to watch, watch bands as well. I'll just reel a few off. There used to be the Powerhouse in Islington, also known as the Pied Bull. It depends how far back you go. The George Roby, that was another good one. Shithole, but it was a good shithole. You had the Mean Fiddler, again, another good one. You had the New Merlin's Cave in Clerkenwell, which nobody's heard of i played it twice even now i mentioned it to people and they've never heard of it before but it was a venue and it did exist and i know because i played there twice you also had the fulham greyhound which was a great venue over in west london just around the corner from the hammersmith odeon also the clubhouse of the road rats mc fucking lunatic biker mc you don't want to get on the wrong side of that lot there was also the, the, uh, the cricketers in Kensington, uh, Kennington, not Kensington, Kennington. Uh, I still, I think that's there still, I'm not sure. You had the Half Moon in Putney. Uh, I mean, these are all iconic venues. Some great bands played there. Sadly, all gone now. And we'll never get that back. And it's a real shame. I know I should be talking about the beer. I know I should be talking about the brewery. But when it comes to London and it comes to beer, the two are intertwined, if you know what I mean, and there's, I don't know, there's, it's, it's a real, you, I could cry sometimes when I look at all the pubs, stroke venues that have closed down now, 
all the raw talent that was in these and and discovered in these pubs as well. I think Oasis were discovered in was it the Powerhouse or the Pied Bull? I think that's where they were first discovered, or one of their early gigs was in there anyway. But you'll never get that again. There's no real venues like that now. They're all commercialised and there's none of that raw talent, you know, turning up on a Tuesday night, straight after work, covered in crap, with a guitar, just doing a set that you've been rehearsing for ages. I mean, I lived all that in in my youth and I'm glad I did because I don't think kids now are going to ever relive that certainly not in London anyway you know and another good venue the 12 bar a great venue gone now as well HS2 put pay to that it, honestly I could really fucking ball my eyes out looking at all the good venues that have gone in London but that's progress progress is not always progression sometimes in my opinion it is regression but I digress let's get back to the beer Camden Hills now as I say, I remember the first time I saw this, this was in the Black Heart, and they was also selling Paolana, so I decided to go for the Paolana. But I tried it on a on another occasion when they'd run out of Paolana, and I thought it weren't, weren't bad. It wasn't, it wasn't cheap, I, I will say that, but it was okay. I think that was in about, oh, was it 2015, 2014? Maybe even a little bit before that. But it was in the Black Heart, I was at someone's birthday, and what, I was, what band was I watching then? Can't remember. I've been there so many times, but I remember it as being good. And I reviewed it a year ago, and I do recall it as being a good beer. But I have looked at this beer a few times on the shelves at Morrison's, and I've looked across the way, and you've got Hofbrau, and you've got some other great, you've got uh, Fru Kirsch as well, which isn't technically a lager, but tastes like a lager. And I'd look at that, and I'd look at that, and i think, well, I want to go for the German stuff. And I shouldn't be, because I should be supporting British brewers, but I think, well, I don't know, I'll tell you in a minute, but I think, well, I don't think I'm going to have to compare the two, but I, I just think that the Hofbrau stuff is better. But one thing I do like about Camden Hills, or, and the Camden Brewery as well, I can tell you a few things I don't like about them, but... One thing I do like is they say on the website that they go over to Bamberg and they compare the, the lagers that they get over there and they try and brew something like what you get over there, over here. Now, I think that's brilliant. Now, obviously, Cameron Hells, they've got the name Hells from the German word for light. A play on the words of Hellas. I've seen some German lagers called Hells, but I like the way that they're comparing what they've getting in or what they're getting in Germany and trying to brew that over here which I think is brilliant it's better than some craft brewers who claim to be producing Hellas's and you know Bavarian style beers and or lagers and German style lagers and it tastes nothing of the salt I mean I could be bigging this up this could be a massive pile of shit I haven't tasted it in over a year but I like what they do on paper and the ingredients well as well are good I'll get onto that in the next section but they're trying to do things right here. So let's stop guessing. One thing I will say before I do, before I get to the next section, one thing I don't like about this, well, two things I can immediately think I don't like about this brewery. One, they've been taken over by Heineken, which is, you know, if you're a craft brewer, I suppose that's the goal really, isn't it? You know, no financial worries. You've made your money. You've made a shitload of money when you've been taken over. So, yeah, you, you basically hit the jackpot. To the beer connoisseur that is selling out, to the person who's done the hard work and got to the point where a macro brewer wants to buy them out, I suppose that is the jackpot. Me, personally, well, I've got mixed feelings about that. You know, if, if, a, if a macro brewer is telling you to cut corners and try and save money, you just think, oh, well, you know, I'm better off being independent. But that's just me anyway, which is, you know, easy for me to say because this isn't my livelihood. But... I'm digressing. Second thing I don't like about them is they have a big affiliation with Arsenal. And I fucking hate Arsenal. They're up there with Wine, the French, and Millwall. So there you go. Let's get on to the beer. Right, this is a 
big bottle. What is it? Is it 660 mil? It looks like a 660 mil. Yes, it is. 660 mil. It is 4.6%, I think. That's what it says on the bottle. What the fuck? Yeah, it is. It's 4.6%. Uh, the ingredients are the pills of malt, which I think they've cut something out on there because it used to have Munich malt in there as well. It's only pills of malt in there now, which is okay, I suppose, if that's your base malt. Uh, the yeast is Bavarian lager yeast, doesn't mean anything. And the hops are Perla, kettle hops are Perla and Hallertau tradition. Now that I like because they are German hops and they are used in traditional German beers. No, I'm hoping no trace of American hops in there. There shouldn't be American hops in lagers. If you're calling your beer a Pilsner or a lager, and you're throwing American hops in there, you're just completely changing the taste. Call it something else. I know I keep going on about this and I keep ranting and raving about it, but you shouldn't be calling a Pilsner a Pilsner and then throwing American hops in it. It's not it's not right. But there you go. What do I know? Was it saying aside? What the hells? Thanks for asking. Hells is the love child of our two favourite German beer styles, Helles and Pilsner. Clean, crisp and dry. Well, again, Clean, yes. Crisp, not really. Lager's not crisp. Dry, yeah, I'll give you that if it's a Pilsner. It's the beer we always wanted to drink and the reason we started our brewery. We hope you agree. Well, that's good, you know, and I will say this about craft brewers. I know I'm continually having a dig at them about the American hop thing and all that. I will say one thing, they have taken lager, I wouldn't say to a new level, but they've made it a little bit more fashionable among people that wouldn't normally drink lager, if you know what I mean. So that's a good thing, in my opinion. The fact they're putting American hops in some of these lagers and calling them Bavarian, you know, fuck off. Don't bullshit me. And relax. Let's open it up before I go into one. Right, Camden Town, it used to be a great place, there's the lager, oh there's the, there's the cap, Camden Town used to be a great place, it was my old stomping ground years ago, every weekend I was down there, great venues, great people, great pubs, sadly not the same anymore, but time moves on, I've moved on, and it, to me now it's just an overpriced tourist trap. Controversial? Maybe. That's how I feel. There is in the glass. This isn't pasteurised by the way. It's quite, I wouldn't say quite cloudy, but there's a haze to it, definitely. On the nose. Doesn't smell bad. I remember I quite liked this the first time around. Now that I've tried a hell of a lot more German lager since, I can see what's going on here. Now this came from Morrison's. I mean, this is widely available in London. I'm not sure how widely available it is up north, but you see it on draft in some pubs, certainly in London. I don't think I've seen it down here in Kent. Have I? No, I don't think I have. There's that beer in the glass now. It looks like a hazy lager. It's very light on the nose quite malty, touch of lemon citrus, it, it does smell quite good actually, now this is quite brewed on quite a big scale and for it to smell that nice is no mean feat. Um, Let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Oh, there's a taste on it. Mmm. 
Oh, I'm not sure about that. What is that? You dive in again. Microphone's on now. Sound quality should improve. I'll just dive in again. God, that is bang average. That ain't great. Um, flavours are... There was a, a horrible, funny type flavour on the first mouthful. Maybe that was just my palate getting adjusted to it. But... That's lacking in flavour. Um, there's no way I'd mistake that for a German beer. God, it really is insipid. I thought there was going to be a bit more flavour on this. Now, if you watched my first video, this didn't taste too bad. It came out of a can, which I don't think is going to make much difference. But... God... If, you know, I have big hopes for this. They used two German hops in here. They used Pilsner malt in there. And they were saying that they went over to Bamberg to compare the beer that was over there to what they're brewing now. And if this is the result, Jesus Christ, have you missed the mark? It just lacks any flavor. Whatsoever. Don't get me wrong. It's quite cold. It's quite refreshing, but just no character at all. It's like they're scrimped on the malts. There's no. There's none of the liquid bread that you get from certainly beers from Bavaria. And if they've been over to Bamberg, I bet they've not tasted a beer like that. I don't know what it is. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were saying that people overlook the importance of water now if they're using water from london it's very hard water indeed in london i don't think it's as hard as you, you've got a bit of a divide in london you've got south london north london south london is quite chalky and that extends all the way f down to kent if you've ever looked at the white cliffs of dover you see that is all like a chalk face that's the sort of chalk you're or the sort of soil that you're dealing with and obviously that has an effect on the water now camden is not that not of that ilk it's north of the water which the water is still quite hard not as hard as south london the water in south london i should say but i think that mate he has got a point about the water being like spring water pure soft water it does make a difference when it comes to lager um, this this is a real poor imitation of any German lager I've ever tasted. There's no malt character on that at all. Body is really weak, despite what you you see there. Um, no, and that's poor. It really is, and. Again, as I say, if you look at my first review of the Camden Hells that I did a year ago, and obviously I hadn't tasted as much German beer as I have now. I mean, I've tasted what, in my opinion, is the pinnacle of German brewing. You know, the, the Munich Big Six, Augustina Hellas, um, the Hackershaw Keller beer, the Hackershaw Hellas, the Augustina, Edelstoff, that kind of thing. The Ainger, Hellas. It, that just doesn't compare. 
even Sam Smith's do a better organic lager than that. That's really overhyped. Through gritted teeth, I paid six pounds for that in a pub, and it tasted okay. It was cold. It was a warm day. It was last summer. I'd be hard pushed to pay more than two pounds a bottle for that stuff. I mean, it'd be fine for a barbecue or something like that, but Jesus Christ, there's no character, no flavor to that at all. And there's a funny taste to it. And that ain't nice. And I don't know what that is, it's like a, it's not earth. It's not an earthy, hoppy. It's just not nice. It, it, it just doesn't taste like a good beer. Now, obviously, if you just want something to chug, throw down your neck, that ain't bad. But if you want flavor, if you want character, if you want beer that's been brewed with a bit of care, then this ain't it. So what's the verdict on Camden Hells? Well, as I say, I've reviewed it before and I didn't think it was too bad. Now I've tried, that was a year ago, now I've tried a lot of German lagers and this is basically what they're trying to do. They're trying to imitate a German lager. They are falling way short of the mark. And how can I put this diplomatically? I can't. I think they're trying to compete with the macro brewers, or Heineken have told them to fucking rein in the character and the flavour because that, that tastes so insipid, little character, no, none of, none of the ingredients stand, that they've got on the label stand out on that beer. And I don't know, I think they're trying to compete with Carlin's and the Foster's and all that. And if that's your benchmark, well, fuck off. Because if you set your standards that low, you, they're never going to be high, are they? People might like that. Your average lager drinker. And I don't mean that, and I always say this, I don't mean that condescendingly, but... Your average lager drinker who just wants something cold and wet, that would probably do it for them. But that brew sheet you've got on the side of the bottle, it could, you know, it could be anything. It it just doesn't taste good. That's really disappointing, and for the price as well. I mean, you pay fuck it, as I said, six pounds in a pub for that. Fuck off! You're taking a piss, and what do you expect? from a brewery that's got an affiliation with Arsenal. Not for me. That is really disappointing. And maybe on the if you watched the first video, maybe I was a little bit naive. I hadn't tasted as many good German lagers as I have now. But that is a fucking really poor imitation. I'm gonna give that, I'm gonna give it a four out of 10. And that sounds like I'm being harsh, but if you're gonna fucking Put yourself up against and mention that you go over to Bavaria and you've come back and if that's the best you can do, fucking go back to the drawing board Camden because that is pony mate. I don't like it. You can fuck off and if someone charges me six pounds, I don't know, I'll have a Guinness instead. I'd rather have a Guinness. That's how, that's how strongly I feel about it. I don't like the piss being taken and I think that's what they're doing at the moment. <clears throat> And you can quote all your fucking Perla hops and your Halatau hops and your pills and the malt and all that, if that's the best you can do with them ingredients. And I always say this, you know, I don't, I don't like the geezer, but if you look at Gordon Ramsay, he always says it's all about the ingredients. And you can, you can mention what you want on the label, but if you get good quality ingredients, but at the end of the day, it's all about the person who's brewing it. Now these German brewers have got years of experience. I don't think they've got as many years of it. Well, they've got no, no heritage, 
really have they they're a craft brewer and i'm not knocking him for it but do you sort of favor camden fucking go back to bavaria go to a fucking brewery steal some of the yeast try and purify your water and get some decent quality noble hops and then come back and start charging six pounds because i'll tell you something that ain't great i'm giving it a four out of ten and there's people you've probably tried this you know if you like it fucking crack on i don't think i'll be buying that again not when you've got that on the shelf and you've got Hofbrau on the other shelf so there you go four out of ten not recommended and remember i'm drinking this shit so you don't have to <laughs>